before we start the video, I have a small request. If you would, just take a moment to think back on the last week and remember something you did with sound. It could be a creative pursuit, a musical pursuit, playing an instrument, making a patch, even just listening to a new piece of music or listening to the world around you. If you're comfortable with it, could you also take a moment to scroll down to the comments section below this video and tell us what you did with sound this week? If you can't think of anything, no worries. This video has this much time remaining in it. If you didn't do anything memorable with sound in the last week, don't worry about it. Take the time you were going to spend watching this video and go do something with sound right now. Again, it doesn't have to be big. This isn't about being productive. You don't have to finish a track or anything like that. It can even just be listening to what's happening in your environment and experiencing it. Then later, you can come back to the video when you have time. It's not going anywhere. And if you want at that point to drop a comment about your experience, that would be great. And on that note, let's get back to the program. Eugene, I was noticing something. A while back, this happened. I'm thinking maybe we should revisit the microsound workshop at the synthesis level. Would you be interested in a video like that? Let us know in the comments. Revisit the microsound workshop at the synthesis level? Okay, let's do it. It's been two months. What are they doing up there? It's nothing but plot holes and loose ends. Cavalier use of terms like alchemy, beseeching the audience to go explore sound. Totally reckless reissue of the QMMG with no concern for the consequences. I mean, look what happened to you, Eugene. Synthesizers are like any other machine. They're either a benefit or a hazard. If they're a benefit, it's not my problem. May I ask you a personal question? Sure. Have you ever been fused into a synthesizer module by mistake? No comment. But in your position, that is a risk. You know what? Let's patch something up. Let's do that microsound workshop patch after all. We're going to cover three types of microsound synthesis. Pulsar, Glisson, and Trainlink. Pulsar synthesis is based on the creation of short amplitude envelopes on simple waveforms like sine. Let's use the very timbre in this case, patched to the first two channels of QMMG in VCA mode. We'll take those two outputs and patch them to the third and fourth channels in high pass mode. Then those high pass outputs to Morphogene so we can record it later. We'll take this math channel 4 unity output to the CV input of QMMG channel 1 to let the sound through. Note that this CV input is also normal to channel 2 CV input, so it modulates both channels at once. We'll trigger that math channel with the EOR from the other side and mult it to the woggle bug. Take the Wogglebug stepped random through an attenuator. And then to the fall input of channel 1 to take the functions in and out of audio rate. And we'll also use channel 1's variable output to modulate both on channel 4, dynamically changing the shape of the modulating envelopes. Let's use the smooth random to modulate the XPO pitch via the attenuated Expo input. And we'll mold the Woggle CV through another attenuator and use it to modulate the two high pass filters on the right side of the QMMG. Again, channel 4 CV input is normal to channel 3, so both are modulated at once. And let's also take the unattenuated copy of the Woggle CV to the modulate left input on XPO. These two modulate CV inputs are also normal together. This will give us some stereo motion on the very timbre.
Let's record this into the morphogen. Glisson synthesis is the creation of many small sound events with glissando applied. In other words, movement up or down in frequency. We can create glissons by using maths to create an upward motion. We'll use the EOC gate to clock the log above. The Wogglebug will change the duration of the glissons, and we will also sum it with a negative offset using the math sum. And patch it to the modumix to randomize the depth and polarity of the math's function before using it to control the pitch. In this way it will be variable in length, and will also cause the oscillator to go up or down in pitch to a random degree. Let's also modulate the very timbre for some stereo motion. Let's record some iterations of that into the morph machine. Trainlet synthesis is created using short bursts of impulse streams. We'll use the XPO sub amplitude controlled by a cycling mass channel. The result is malted to two high pass filters. and will create a new impulse frequency with each new amplitude event. Let's also modulate those filters with the smooth and woggle CV outs attenuated in the middle channels of this maths. Let's record it. Let's also do some sound on sound recording to add more layers.
I'd recommend doing layering like this with any or all of these techniques, or even layering them on each other. It can also be fun to add space around these events using effects. Let's try feeding the VCA channel output through Brucia before molting it to the two high pass channels. Let's record it. We recorded several instances of each of these microsound techniques. I've also recorded a couple more of each with splices made by each of these synthesis types. Hey you, put these on free sound. Thanks for watching. Happy patching. What is this morphogene reel? Reminds me of the microsound workshop reel from a few years back, but it's definitely not exactly the same. I'm gonna go ahead and put this reel up on free sound. That original reel is still there. I'll link both of them in the description. Thanks for watching and happy patching.